At least 40 journalists have been killed since the Hamas attacks on October 7th and the Israeli campaign in response, 35 in Gaza alone during that Israeli response. It's according to the Committee to Protect Journalists, which notes this is the highest total of any recent conflict. It led to, quote, the deadliest month for journalists since they began gathering data in 1992. Last week, one Palestinian reporter broke down as he learned of the loss of his colleague live on the air. Gaza is the most dangerous place in the world to be a journalist right now. It's not even close. And since no foreign journalists are allowed in, unless they are embedded with the Israeli army, these local journalists, often employed as freelancers by Western media, are the eyes and ears of the world. So it was incredibly distressing when an Israeli group called Honest Reporting circulated the names and in at least one case pictures of local Palestinian journalists who documented the Hamas attack and all but outright accused them of having foreknowledge of the attack itself and being collaborators in it. Those accusations were amplified and spread all over social media. Some outlets, like CNN, chose to cut ties with one of the freelancers after Honest Reporting surfaced an old photo of him with Hamas's leader, though we don't know the context. Others, like the New York Times, whose freelance contributor was targeted, issued a strong rebuke, quote, the accusation that anyone at the New York Times had advanced knowledge of the Hamas attacks or accompanied Hamas terrorists during the attacks is untrue and outrageous. It is reckless to make such allegations, putting our journalists on the ground in Israel and Gaza at risk. We also want to speak in defense of freelance photojournalists working in conflict areas whose jobs often require them to rush into danger to provide first-hand witness accounts and to document important news. This is the essential role of a free press in wartime. But since that implication, several prominent Israeli politicians warned that journalists who knew about the attack would be treated like terrorists, that is, targeted for violence. Those voices include War Cabinet Minister Benny Gantz. Even Republican Senator Tom Cotton of Arkansas jumped in on the whole thing, writing a letter to The New York Times with a veiled threat about employees of the newspaper facing criminal prosecution, citing those reports that their journalists were embedded with Hamas. And then last night, through the Associated Press, we learned that Honest Reporting, the group making these claims, quote, had no evidence to back it up, the suggestion that any of the journalists were, it implied were Hamas collaborators, had any foreknowledge of the attacks. In the context of the worst death toll of working reporters I've seen in my life, this is unfathomably reckless from everyone involved. The reason war reporting is so crucially important is because, as the old cliche goes, truth is the first casualty of war. In the era of social media, this takes on new meaning as we are subjected to an endless stream of images and information and propaganda. Let's take one notable example, Hamas leadership in interview after interview, has either gamely tried to deny their own atrocities on October 7th or seeded false stories. The head of Hezbollah recently gave a speech where he claimed that it was Israeli soldiers who killed their own citizen, that they were the ones really responsible for what happened. That and other conspiracy theories have now predictably blossomed online with all the attendant grainy video and the like. But the atrocities committed by Hamas are undeniable, not just because of the eyewitness accounts to them, but also because Hamas made sure that seemingly everyone committing the atrocity recorded it for posterity. Though there will be those who dispute the slaughter, the slaughter is not in dispute. There will be those who dispute the abject misery and death of Gaza's people, but that is not in dispute. In fact, earlier this week, a senior Biden administration official said the death toll of Palestinians in the Gaza Strip is likely far higher than the 10,000 being reported by the Gaza Health Ministry. Journalism, at its best, makes us reckon with terrible truths, and among the many, many, many lies worthy of mourning in this war, I want to honor those fellow members of our profession who have paid the ultimate price while bearing witness for all of us.